time in the Lord tonight. The church meets three times a week normally, and so make sure you're a, you're a part of every bit of that, and that's the best way to raise your kids. All right, Proverbs chapter number 10. Proverbs chapter number 10. I want you to look at this verse of scripture here this morning, and I will be turning to several more uh, this morning to show you other scriptures. I've actually got five little um, thoughts here to give you, and if you'll listen to me, I think, I, I'm sure, it'll be a help to you. Proverbs chapter number 10. Look at verse number 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Now, when you read Proverbs, you've got to understand that these Proverbs are not every one of them absolute promises. They are principles. That means, as a general rule, people who fear the Lord live longer happier lives than people that live wicked, as a general rule. Sometimes God will reach down and take out a dedicated Christian, a young man at a young age. That does happen. That's the exception to the rule. Remember, if there's a general rule, every, you can always find an exception. The exception don't overthrow the rule. The exception proves the rule, that there is one. Sometimes wicked people, like George Burns, filthy, wicked people, 99 years old, whatever, goes a long time. 99 is not long compared to eternity, but it's long for me and you. And that's the exception. But as a general rule, if you're right with God, your life will be prolonged longer than if you live wicked and in sin. I mean, every time you sin, you're taking time off your life. Deliberately sinning against God, you're shorting. I don't care, I'm having fun. You're gonna care when that time gets here. You're going to wish you had more time. Let me see. I'm going to preach this morning on five ways to lengthen your life. Now, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die, right? I was witnessing to a drunk one time, and I always think of this. It was a long time ago. I was out on the street, and we was giving out tracks. This guy, his neck was red. He's drunk. You know, you start out little drinking when you're young, when you're about, when you're old, buddy, that stuff will get you. And he was sitting there, and his neck, bloodshot eyes, and his neck was red. And I gave him, and I said, here you go, buddy. He said, I, I said, here you go. Take this, I'll tell you how to go to heaven. I want to see you in heaven. And he said, yeah, I want to go to heaven. I said, well, you got to get ready, man. He said, he said, here's what he said. Don't get mad at me. He said, everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to die. I'd like to know how to eat. I think you're going to get there. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> I said, you know, you're right, brother. <laughs> you can get some of the best doctrine from them old drunks out on the street uh, that, that you'll ever get anywhere sometime. And uh, he, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die, right? That's true. Little boys is in class one day, and the preacher got up, and, and he told me, he said, all right, boys, how many of y'all want to go to heaven? And all of them raised their hands except one little guy. He said, Johnny, why didn't you raise your hand? He said, oh, I thought you was going to take a load right now. <laughs> now, see, we don't want to die. We, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die, right? Uh, I'm going to use to illustrate, didn't think about this till a minute ago, uh, the message this morning, Miss Dot. All right, Phyllis, would you tell Miss Dot I need her to stand up, please? Uh, you, you're looking at me, grinning. Miss Dot, I didn't know. Stand up, Miss Dot. Miss Dot, me and her grew up together. She, this, yesterday, celebrated her birthday. Was it yesterday? And I didn't even know it, and I'm sorry. I didn't know it until this morning. That's Brother Wayne's birthday. You're, uh, she looks a lot younger than you do, Brother Wayne. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Brother Wayne, his birthday was yesterday. He just turned 75. Yesterday, Miss Dot was 91. 91. Listen, she never misses a service. She, never, she works in the garden, uses a weed eater, and she's going to come over and do some work for me this summer. <laughs> no, I, I love her. She's been, like a, she's been like a mother to me, I'm telling you. And I've known Miss Dot 30, 35 years, and she's been that way ever since I've known her. Now, look, y'all, she's done something right. Amen? Amen? 
Listen, you hope you can use a weed eater when you're 91. I mean, 81, 71. Some of y'all done cooked out at 45. Still can't do nothing. And now listen, she, done, she must have done something right. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna show you from the Bible. Preacher, how can I live? I wanna see my kids. I wanna see my grandkids. I wanna see my great grand. I wanna see them grow up. I wanna see what we all do. Here's your best shot at it. Ready? Here's your best shot. Number one, in the Bible, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. If you want to turn to it, hurry. I'll read it and I'm going to hurry along. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth which the Lord thy God gives. That's the only commandment out of the ten that has a promise tacked on to it. God said, if you will honor thy father and thy mother, your days would be long on the earth. I am a firm believer that kids, we're, buddy, we're living in a generation of kids. Lord have mercy. I mean, it's just, you know, I, have you seen? I don't, I don't ever watch Dr. Phil and stuff. I can't stand stuff like that. I can't stand it. I, both sides are wrong. And, uh, and you want to just shake them and say, listen, this is what the Bible said. And they're on there arguing, and neither one of them knows what they're talking about. But you, have you seen some of the brats that they'll put on there? Lord, they'll put a little old girl on there. She's about 14, and she got on more makeup than Tammy Faye had in her lifetime. And she was saying, I catch you on a five minute chewing guy. I catch you on, know, and showing her about her whole body and said, my mama tries to tell me what to do. It's none of her business. It's blah, blah, you know, I'll do what I want to. I cuss my daddy. I'll, I'll, I'll slap my mama. And I thought, boy, I tell you, I wouldn't have cussed my daddy but one time. Amen. Amen. One time. If I woke up the next few days, I'd tell him I was sorry. I was scared to death to say something like that to my daddy. I mean, years ago, people grew up and, and they respected and honored the parent. Now, I understand that some of you have had parents that are not what, what they're supposed to be. I understand that. Sometimes you have abusive parents. Sometimes you have parents that desert you and stuff. And I, I got that. I understand that. But as I said, as a general rule, they, uh, they deserve and need and supposed to have our, our support. I heard about um, this boy uh, not, not too long ago. His mother was needing some wood and she was, she was about 75 years old and she was needing some wood and called around because it's getting cold. She burned wood and that boy told her, he said, I'll bring you a load and charge her $75 for taking his own mother a load of wood. Just stuff like that. You know, you gotta be careful about stuff like that. Charging your mother to bring her, you better be careful about uh, junk like that. There, you know, mama can't even keep pills in her, in her, in her, her, in her uh, medicine cabinet anymore because the little brat daughters and granddaughters come in and steal the pills out of mama's cabinet. I mean, and steal them out of their mailbox and everything else in the world. I mean, because that's not honoring. I heard about a, a man and woman that was real poor and this is back a long time ago and they saved every bit of money they ever made sending their boy to college. And they saved it and lived in poverty so their boy could have a chance in life and go to college. And they sent him off to college and they, 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 the story said that they uh, got to go see him. They was gonna surprise him and go visit him. And he was like gone to Harvard or somewhere like that. And that old man and woman took a, a horse and buggy and drove three days and rode three days and traveled and finally made that college. And they ain't never seen nothing like that. All them big buildings and it just so happened here come their son walking down the sidewalk with some other boys around. He done got in with this preppy little crowd at school and he was, he was all, you know, hot shot and he was all with these big shop friends and he was walking down the sidewalk and mama run up to him in a little old print dress and daddy had on overalls and I mean, they'd been, oh, the horse mule of traveling across the country and they run up and said, hey son, hey son, it's so glad to see you. And that boy looked at him and said, I don't know you and walked on down that sidewalk and it took their money all their life and was living in college and was ashamed of his mom and daddy. That's what that book says when it means honor thy father and thy mother. Brother Mike hit on it in Sunday school. That thy days may be long upon the earth. You say, well, my daddy don't deserve it. He didn't say that. My dad was an alcoholic when I was growing up. 
And sometimes daddy would come, he'd come to my ball games in high school and he'd be, he'd be drinking, I'm telling you. And it, it, I think, oh, oh, Lord. I mean, he'd be over there hollering and screaming and they'd be out fighting with the cheerleaders and, and cussing the referees and everything else. And, but you know, I look back now and I thought, man, he's my biggest fan. I, I tell you, I, I, I really, he was. And he'd kill somebody over me. He would have. There's no doubt about it. And, and now the older I get, I realize you know when you're, when you're 14, you think your daddy's the dumbest man in the world, but by the time you're 30, you are amazed how much he knew and you didn't know he knew. And you're beginning to see things just like he did. So the Bible said, honor thy father and thy mother. You want to live long? So I'm going to respect them. I may not agree with them. They may have done me wrong, but I forgive them and I honor my father and my mother. Number two, number two. In your Bible, Isaiah chapter 38 if you want to look at it, please, you don't have to. But in Isaiah 38 and verse number two, here's the way you lengthen your life and live a long life. It is by humbling yourself. Oh, Hezekiah here, God had already pronounced his death. You're gonna die, boy, you're gonna die. Done said it, that's it. Get you, go pick out a tombstone, go, go pay you, go call them, tell them you'll be there in a day or two, call them and tell them I'm coming after you. And the Bible said this, Verse two, Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord and said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And then the, then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, go and say to Hezekiah, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. You know how he done that? He got 15 years extra life. You know how he done that? He humbled himself and said, God, I've tried to live right. God, I pray you'd have mercy on me. Forgive me. The Lord already done said that guy's gonna die. The Lord already said he's dead, man. You're, you're out. You're done. And he turned his face toward the wall and said, please, Lord, give me, give me some time, Lord. And God said, okay, 15 years on. That's a pretty, that's a pretty good, significant way to get prayer. You want, you want your life to live long? You want to live a long life? Honor God. Stay humble. Stay humble, y'all. You know, in the army, they say there's three orders when you're in combat. Order one, get down. Order two, stay down. Order three, don't get up. That's it. That's it. You want, you want to learn to fight and come back? Get down, stay down, don't get up. And buddy, you couldn't describe the Christian life any better. You want to live for God? Get down, stay down, don't get up. By the time you stick your head up and think I'm better than other people, uh, you're going to get shot. By the time you think, well, I'm more righteous, I've got it together, I've got it all figured out, bam, you're going down. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before fall. Somebody asked me not long ago, they said, well, don't you want your sermons on any of I don't want. I don't want my name on YouTube. I don't want to be in the newspaper. I don't want to be on TV. Leave it alone. No no publicity, none. No, I'm done. I had that stuff, and it ain't what it's cracked up to be. You better stay humble. You better stay low. You better say, Lord, it don't matter if nobody ever knows my name. I want to be right with you when I lay down at night. That's the best way to live a long life. Amen. Best way. And that is honoring and humbling yourself. Number three. Let me give you another way to, to uh, live a long life. And that is Deuteronomy 25. Let's look at Deuteronomy 25 right quick uh, this morning. And uh, if you would please, here's another verse. Unusual thought here. Deuteronomy 25, 15. The Bible said, but thou shalt have a perfect and just weight. That's not talking about how much you weigh. Although that might help you too. Uh, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, what does that say? That verse said, if you'll treat people right and be honest in your dealings with people, it'll add years to your life. You want that in plain old redneck language we use around here? If you're a crook, bad things are gonna happen to you and you ain't gonna get to live out your full potential. You ever met somebody, everybody, everybody in town knows him? He's a crook, he's a crook, he's a crook. Cheat everybody. You know what you need to learn how to do? You need to learn how to say, hey, you know what? This isn't right. It's not right for me to cheat you. It is not right for you to cheat somebody else. 
Are you listening? You know what my mom always said? Mom said, Danny, treat people the way you want them to be treated. That means this. If a man gets out of the car in front of me and drops a $100 bill and he's walking into Walmart, I got one of two choices. I can say, I know how I'd want to be treated. If it was my wallet, amen. amen. Well, I mean, if you drop turn it off, don't it make you feel good and say, here, sir, you dropped this. Amen. You say, huh. I know some of y'all in here. You'd grab it and say, oh, my favorite verse. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. <laughs> that ain't the Bible. <laughs> but you think it is. No, 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 no. You know, you know what? If you treat people like that, it's going to come back to you one day. I promise you today, if you treat people wrong and hurt people and cheat people, it will come back on you double. Double. Amen? If I, if I, if I found a dollar and I saw you drop a dollar, then I'd want, I'd want to pick it up. I know, I know people who... Oh, my Lord, I'm telling you what. I got, give you an illustration. Guy called me back when we had them bad hell storms a few years ago. He said, Danny, you want some money? I said, sure. He said, I can get you some. I said, okay, find me. I can use it. I got bills. I got stuff to do around the house. I can use it. He said, uh, do you have any hail damage on your roof? And I said, Tell you the truth, I don't even know, man. So I can't get up there and look at it. My, well, my bedroom goes like that, and I, I, I don't think so. I ain't leaking or nothing. And he said, look, insurance companies are paying off everywhere. Remember a few years ago when they were doing it? He said, insurance companies are paying off everywhere. He said, all you got to do is get an adjuster to come out here and look at your roof. If it's got a dent in it, if it's got a crack in it, he said, they'll give you, I think he said like $10,000 or something like that, put you on a new roof. And he said, I, I can get it done for you, and we'll split the money. And uh, I said, uh, man, I'll tell you, and he, I like this guy, he's my buddy. I said, honest to goodness, that sounds crooked. I said, I ain't trying to be self-righteous or nothing, but something ain't right about that. He said, no, 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 there ain't nothing wrong with that. He said, that's why we pay insurance. He said, you paid it all in. Now, if you're not careful, you would develop a crook mentality, which makes you think I can cheat the insurance company because I must got to pay them so much. Now, look up here. I'll tell you when to bow your head. If I look at me, uh, uh, put your heads up. You're, you, you, I've been looking at people a long time. You're going, don't cheat people. You say, well, Brother Danny, they're rich and they'd never miss it. That may be true, but you got to live with it. You got to live with it. You got to live with it. I mean, don't lie to get money. I've told you this before. I'll give you another illustration. Lady called me. Now, I don't, I don't know nobody in here that does this. I, I'm just preaching, okay? If you're guilty, it's between you and God. Lady called me and she said, Danny, me and, me and my fiance, we want to get married. And I said, well, okay. And she said, uh, uh, me and him want to get married. But she said, we're going to go to Mexico and get married. She said, what do you think about that? And I said, well, I don't care. Find me, I reckon. I said, why are you going to Mexico? She said, because we can get married in Mexico and here the United States don't even know it. And she said that way he gets to keep all his benefits and I get to keep all my benefits and we're right with God and we're married and everything works out. Again, I said, that sounds crooked to me. She said, what do you think about that? She said, that sounds crooked. I said, she said, no, no, we're going to get married and see God... Watch your mind when you start conniving like that and saying, well, you better watch it when you start thinking like that. That old human mind will connive, that old thing. You'll cheat around here, cheat around here. Listen, if I sell a man my car, I ought to tell him what's wrong with that car. Oh, I hate to do that, don't you? You know somebody's getting ready to buy it and, 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 and you know, well, I hate to... Well, it's got a little problem right over here. You might, they're going to find it out as soon as they get home. You might as well be honest with them. And that woman said, I said, so what you're doing is you're going down there to Mexico to get married so God will get off of you and leave you alone. 
And then you'll come back here and tell the government, we're not married so you can get their money. Is that what you're saying? And she didn't like it that I put it like that. But that's exactly what they're doing. What they're doing is lying to the government because they're crooked and wicked anyway, right? So it's all right to lie to them. Holy oh, mercy, it's getting bad in here. I wasn't planning on even saying none of that. But you know how to lengthen your life? Be honest. God's able to bless you with more. If you'll treat people right and be honest, God's able to give you more than what you would have got by cheating them anyway, y'all. God's able to do that. And listen, you don't even you don't need every little old thing that comes down the road. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, live life. You will live a long life, brother. Be honest. Number four, this fits in the same category, so I won't take time on it. Hating covetousness. Hating covetousness. Uh, Proverbs 28, 16. Proverbs 28, 16 said, uh, he that hateth covetousness. Look at it. Uh, look at the, the prince that wanteth understanding is a great oppressor, but he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. What about that? If you hate covetousness, what's covetousness? I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. I'm young, I'm free, I want, every, I want to live life to the fullest, I want everything. I, there's nothing wrong with having stuff. If God blesses you with a lot of stuff, praise God, hallelujah. If you do it right and do it honest and serve him, more power to you. I hope everybody in here becomes a millionaire. Really, I mean that. I, I hope you do. But beware of just wanting stuff, wanting stuff. You know, there's people that's got a million dollars and they're not happy with it. You know what they want? Another million and another million and another million and another more famous, more popular, more this, more drugs, more dope, more uh, uh, sexual activity, more, more, okay, never satisfied, never satisfied. That's the way to shorten your life is never being satisfied. And then last, the number five, I'll quickly get this and spend a little more time on it. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 40. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 40. The Bible said here in this verse, look at verse 40. Thou shalt keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee. Thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That's a promise to Israel, but uh, we, can, we can enjoy the blessings of that promise spiritually that God said, if I would do right, and I would enjoy doing right, and I would serve him, that he would bless me and prolong my days and bless my kids. Bless my kids. You don't tell me sins of mom and daddy don't come down on them kids, and goodness of mom and daddy comes down on them kids. The statutes, that it may go well with thee. Years ago, there were two boys born in this country. Back, I'm guessing, 20, 19, 20, somewhere around in there, early in the 20s, days right before the Depression. These two boys had a lot in common. They were both from way down south. One was from Mississippi, the other one was from Alabama. They both grew up in poor, white neighborhood. They both grew up with a mama that loved God and went to a Pentecostal church. They both grew up with a daddy who was a decent man and maybe even saved both of them, not sure. Both these boys grew up without a lot, nothing, hardly owning nothing. They grew up down, in, down south where they had to work for everything they had, grew up and hardly had nothing. As these boys got over, it was older, it was obvious that both of them had talent, both of them could, were smart, and other things they had. One of these boys grew up and started st singing, singing in church, singing gospel songs, very talented, very smart, and as he got older, forsook the church for a career in music. He got famous overnight. He literally raked in millions of dollars in the late 50s. That was a lot of money back then, in the 60s. The world went crazy over him. His drug habit got worse and worse. Pills, 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 women, wine, fornication, 
adultery, messing around with women he's not married to. He got and stood on stage and people went crazy. They went crazy over this man. They loved him. They'd fall at his feet. Women threw theirself at him. He had the world by the tail. Talked filthy. He talked like his, his, his mouth was a garbage pit. And they said he would curse. Some run report said he hired a man to go kill somebody that was messing with his wife, one of his wives or something like that. They said he was, he, he was tormented and after the concert, he'd get all his group together and they'd all get together and sing uh, I'm bound for the promised land, amazing grace. And, and, he, was, and he thought, There's, uh, God, I'm, I'm gonna live for the devil and got on stage and gyrated and, dang, and polluted a whole generation of young men and women. 42 years old, he died. And the newspaper come out and said, oh, it's not drug related. It's not drug related. Anytime a celebrity dies and they say it's not drug related, 99% of the times, drugs kill. They'll say, oh, he died of a heart attack. Well, what caused the heart attack at 42? They said, he was, they said his body was like a drug store. He had so many drugs in his body. Dead, 42 years old. Blew it, man. Blew it. More talent than all of us been here put together. Good looking. The other boy got saved when he was five years old. Mama took him to a Methodist church. By the time he was 10, he was preaching. Preaching at 10 years old, that little boy. And he said he always wanted to serve God. Never drank, never smoked. Never did any kind of drugs. And that guy, when he left this world at a very old age, left a $75 million plant down there in Greenville, South Carolina this morning. When he was 65 years old, he didn't have high blood pressure. And traveled around the world every year from the time he was 50 to the time he was 65, had thousands of converts, and I think wound up with a half a million converts to the Lord Jesus Christ and lived a happy, blessed life and died and went on to heaven. That's the story of two guys. One of them shortened his life by sin. Jack Howell said he talked to Elvis one day, and he said he made him in an elevator back in Elvis's heyday, and he got the chance to witness to Elvis Presley. He says, hey, man, what, what's the deal here? He said, don't you know the Lord? And he said, Elvis Presley looked at him and said, I know I got saved when I was a young man. And he said, my grandma, and then they took me to church down there in Tupelo, and he said, I know I got saved. And Jack Howell said, well, what happened? He said, I just got tired of fighting temptation. And it killed him. It killed him. It shortened his life. Newspapers got it every day. Happens right here in Burke County every week. Somebody's life is cut short because they will not quit sinning. You know how to lengthen your life? Do right, treat people right, serve God, and he'll bless you with a long life. Let's stand. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every head bowed, every eye closed. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed this morning. This is an invitation. Nobody's talking, nobody's moving. Just remember, friend, just because you got away with it yesterday don't mean God ain't looking. Just because nothing bad didn't happen this week, that don't mean nothing. Sometimes it takes a while for your ship to come in. But it finally comes in. And it always comes in. I wonder if there'd be that one of those here this morning. Just get in this altar and say, you know what, preacher? I don't want to shorten my life by living in sin. I want God to bless me. I want to see my kids. I want to see my grandkids. 
I want to see my family. I want to get a chance to do something for God. Just slip out. Come on down here and let's pray. Come on down here and just get down on your knees and let's pray. Some's coming. Others are coming. Y'all come pray with this young man over here. Others are coming this morning. Just get out say, this is the invitation. This is the invitation. Come on right now. Come on right now. Amen. Trust the Lord right now, friend. Trust the Lord right now. Just get down here on your knees. Say, oh, dear Lord, I know I'm wrong. God, I want to do right. And I'm confessing all of my sins. Everything I've done wrong, God, I want to make it right. I want to make it right this morning. Oh, God, help us. Father, I pray right now the Holy Spirit would do what we cannot do. Lord, I can't convict the person. I can't do it. God, I'm begging you to do it. I'm asking you to touch every heart here this morning. Do what ought to be done. Have your way in our life. God, bless all these on the altar this morning. Bless the easy to hear this morning. People I don't even know, I pray you touch every single heart here today. Dear God, do something this morning in the lives and hearts of people as we leave this place. Lord, let us walk out of here knowing where we stand with you. Our heads are still bowed. People still praying this morning. I, I wonder how it is with you this morning, friend. Hey, we'll wait just a few seconds. We'll wait just a few seconds. You need to come. Mama, daddy, wife, husband, you need to come right now be a good time just slide out of your seat and make your way down here. Make your way down here and say, all right, Lord, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit fooling around. Uh, you've been sneaking around, doing something wrong. Good time to get it fri- fixed. Good time to get it right. 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 If you hold on to it, it'll kill you before it's over with you. Bob Jones Sr. left it alone. Elvis played with it. Sure did. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, take these words and burn them in somebody's heart today. Lord, don't let them be able to get away from it. They get their heart right with you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. These are still praying. We'll wait just a few seconds. She's playing softly. Amen. While these are praying this morning, don't forget service tonight, six o'clock. You come back and bring somebody with you. I've got.